Hello. The Mystery Files? The Mystery Files? The Summer Tapes? The Summer Tapes? With Tiffany? And Logan? I felt weird saying it this way, because you're usually first (laughs) in terms of names, because it's like, it flows better, Logan and Tiffany, but you looked at me like, it was my turn. Because I'm the the leader of the podcast. You're the the leader of the show. There's no show without me. There's no show without either of us. There's no show without either of us. (laughs) Logan Lamaster and Tiffany Walker. And that's why you've been gone for two weeks? <sighs> it's been longer than two weeks. It's been like that's three. So funny. And that's on us. Things are happening. Guys, Life is going on. We can't help it. Guys, we've been busy. We've been booked and busy. Moving, vacation. All of the above. Comedy. Finishing a summer camp job. All of the above. Wow. So yeah. You... We've been oh. through each chapter of life in a matter of three weeks. And here we are. Stunning and thriving as here we should we are. be. Episode four... Of season, season four. LOL. Yeah, this is the either. fourth I don't know what summer either. tapes, maybe. Yep. We'll say it. If it's wrong, we'll just right tell now. us in the I'm comments. Cheating. Logan's cheating. If everyone wants to know, I cheat every time to remember what episode it and is. And I act like I didn't know. Well, I act like it's I didn't know. It's season four. Episode okay. four. Four okay, for four. You're stunning. Wendy's. <laughs> Wendy's. You did amazing. And last time we talked about... It's a Cthulhu. Uh, yep. What's that, what's that guy's <laughs> name? H.P. One... Lovecraft. Yep. Yep. <laughs> a part of... A yes, part of, a part of it, you know. Kind of a part of the Lovecraft verse. Yes, which is wild. Also, I saw a little finger puppet that was Cthulhu the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of um Cthulhu stuff. stuff yeah, now, I'm like, since we just, did the episode, that keeps happening. It's like the simulation thing. Like things are appearing as we talk about them. It's like we're manifesting it into his existence by us. Yeah, I it's feel weird. Like, I feel like it's also like a knowledge thing. Like once you like learn something new, you see it like everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, now wait a second. But I never Was saw that before. always here. Because like, there's no way I did not notice it. You know. Yeah. Like if we do a shadow people episode, I'm gonna start seeing shadow people everywhere. And, Don't like, say that. Stuff. Well, it's not shadow people this time. Oh, thank God. So good luck. This one... You said, it's true crime, isn't it? This Yeah, this one's more of a true crime. It's something that... I don't know why we haven't talked about it. I know we don't do too much <laughs> true crime stuff, but, like, this is, like... We're flipping the script. It's a huge mystery in one of the oh. greatest American histories. So if Bonnie that, and Clyde Part 2. No. No? But it does give a little America. A little America back oh. in the olden days. Uh, oh, we talking uh. 1800s? Oh, not that old. I can't Dang. do that. Ugly time. You, you called anyone from the 1800s old. Good. They won't be offended. They're dead. So like, <laughs> ha ha. You don't know that. Stop. There's someone really know. old out there. Yeah. What if oh someone's listening ghosts, to a podcast? Though. The ghosts out there. Like, someone's 250 years old listening to this right now. They and know you just who to haunt. Them. Now they know who to haunt. Because they're like, ooh, she's ageist against the dead people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's about time someone was, too. I'm just saying. It's about time someone was ageist against ghosts. <laughs> do you think, do you think when, wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you think like. <laughs> When you die, listen. Yeah, I'm listening. You know, like, when you're old, you have trouble, like, walking and stuff and, like, yeah. things like that. Do you think, like, when you become a ghost, you still have trouble? Because that uh, would suck. Well, it begs the question, like, the age-old question of, like, when you die, are you the age that, like, you died as? Like, mm-hmm. Or do you Or you die, die in your happiest, like, when you're a ghost, you are in the happiest moment of your life. Because I think that was the idea in Casper, So before the womb, I'm going to be an embryo. <laughs> <laughs> you were happy before you were born. Yeah. But, like, if yeah. you're, like, an 89-year-old person who died at 89, when you were happiest at, like, 35, yeah. then, like, would you be a 35-year-old ghost or you're 89 mm. and she died at 89? Like, what's the situation? That would check out. Or would just be hmm. decrepit I feel like you can... Win. Well, that, that's what I'm worried about. Like, if I were... <laughs> I would find any way necessary to, like, get myself to cross over. Yeah. Like, you're like, okay. Like, my, my brain's already on fire. Yeah. And if, like, I die and it's still on fire... <laughs> I don't need What's more the of point? That. Why am I still here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Send me to hell. Or heaven. Whatever. Whatever y'all want to do. You pick one up there. You, you pick, pick one. one. <laughs> you pick. Spin a wheel. <laughs> you choose. <laughs> Roll the die. Death. <laughs> I hope you pick a card. Pick a card, any card. Which ones do you choose? Oh my god! This episode is more true crime. Okay. It's serious, but like there's interesting theories surrounding it that bring in. I love a good theory. So like we can be silly goofy on the side, but not silly goofy in the true crime. Mm -hmm. How many pages? What are we looking at? Okay, I did have sixty (laughs) five, but now I have forty (laughs) nine. That's so much better. I don't think you understand how much better that is. 
<laughs> it's like kind of marginally better. Yeah, but it's way better than it was. <laughs> In terms of pages, like this is as close as I could get it. There's maybe some I could have taken out, but I want it to like set the scene. I'm a storyteller. What was what the I highest say? page count you had before? Ever? Probably yeah. in the 70s. <laughs> And I think that I was, was so, I was thinking it was up there. I think it was in the seventies. So I think it was the two part for the one conjuring or the one. Oh, um, the one we par- did a parter. Yeah, that um, was that the conjuring house. Yeah, yes, because yeah. there's yeah. a lot because we had to do two parters with that, and then we did a yes. third episode. Right? Yeah, no, maybe two or three. I think we've done three at least of the conjuring oh, series. Oh yeah, so of the Ed, Ed Lorraine Warren. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, but The Conjuring was two part. Also, this is a very side off topic, but I'm really excited. So I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm. But Sam and Colby, my favorite little YouTuber guys, little ghost hunting guys, Mm -hmm. they said if they made 10 million subscribers on YouTube, Mm. that they were going to post them going back to The Conjuring house. And I think they're going back for like a week and they've already gone. A week. And they posted stuff about like how this experience was like one of the most crazy experiences they've ever had. And like it changed their religion. And what I, they believe. I'm like, that is crazy. I remember we watched it together and like they mm-hmm. were like freaking out after just like one they night. They were there a for week? one night. But That's crazy. They went for a week and they, they said. They didn't it, even stay the whole time, right? They like left. I think they stayed most of the night, but they didn't stay like, they stayed until like, maybe three or four in the morning. Yeah. They were like, we're getting a hotel. Like, it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah. It's a wrap. But yeah, they went for a week and they just hit 10 million subscribers on YouTube. So Dang. now they're working on editing so they can post it. Because they said they weren't mm. going to post it until they had all the subscribers. But they have it now and I'm so excited. If we if we reach 10 million, we'll go next. Yeah. Get us here. Get I'm us actually th- really scared. <laughs> <laughs> Our numbers go up tomorrow. They go, thank God. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't want to do The internet crowd funds to screw with us. And they're like, oh, get them possessed. That'd be so cute and fun. Get the little gay one. <laughs> get them, get them. <laughs> get them possessed. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. Oh my god. And then I have one more little thing to tell you because mm. I was scared that my apartment was haunted because there was one night. As we're in your apartment. Currently. I know, I know. I just have to tell you because I was really scared and I haven't been able to tell you. <gasps> one night. <laughs> one night. It was the depths of the evening. It was probably like 4 a.m. And Benjamin w- w- like walked to the bathroom the night to go to the bathroom. And he was like, why is the bathroom door closed? The bathroom door was randomly closed. And keep in mind, you can only close it from the inside. Yeah. So, like, why it was, was it locked closed? Too? It wasn't locked, but, like, it's But it was, never... like, was it sealed? Yeah. And the thing is, it's never closed unless one of us is in there. That's creepy. So, we were, like, that's really weird. And then I was real freaked out. Didn't go to bed most of the night. Not that night. And the next night, I remember, like, when I was going to bed, I remember, like, pulling this charger that was in the living room into the bedroom beside my bed and plugged it in. Like, I have all these memories of my process because I also brought my heated blanket. Like, it was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then, in the middle of the night, I go to, like, check time on my phone. And I was, like... Why isn't my phone plugged in? Like, I plugged in my phone. And so then I was like, well, where's the whole charger? What the heck? And so then I was like, I need to go find it. I went in the living room. It's laying in the middle of the floor in the living room. That's weird. Like, how did it get there? That's weird. And it's not like one of those things like, oh, I was half asleep and maybe I, I forgot Like, were you it. night walking or something? But that's no, like... No, like, I was vividly awake. Like, there's no that's way. That's weird. I'm like, okay, so that's all that's happened. Knock on wood. But now I'm I'm a little scared of my apartment now. Oh, my God. So, that reminds me. I think I told this on the podcast before but this is like an early one this is like first like 10 20 episodes maybe Uh, but it reminds me of when i told you about um the shuffler no wait yes the shuffler at point park um when i was in lawrence hall freshman year i was just like chilling in like my single Mm. dorm room by myself writing and then my door was completely shut and i heard it go switch switch (gasps) unlock and go and then i heard oh absolutely not i i literally texted i forget who it was at the time i was like can i come hang out because i don't want to be in here You're right like, please. now and you lived in a single at that point didn't you yeah Stop. yeah so i was by myself that it was like 10 was at night that ghost was waiting to possess you i was like i need to leave like immediately uh, no. i was scared i was scared. so scared i hate when homes are just haunted you know not cute no literally uh, but don't worry the cameras start like floating in the air <gasps> I get possessed. But yes, this one isn't about possession, so don't Damn. you fret. This one's just murder. Bum, bum, bum. But are you oh, ready? Bum, bum. I am. Are you ready for this one? Give me a little drum roll. All right. Okay. <gasps> this week on Z Mystery Files presents the summer tapes. I am presenting the case of the assassination of JFK. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, not for assassination. Marilyn Monroe did it. Done. Done. Easy. Could it even been her? When'd she die? Mm. She died in suspicious There's theories that Marilyn too. Monroe did it. I didn't know that. That's not part of my theory. <laughs> so, like, keep throwing them out. The more you got, the more I need. But, yes, that's our oh. case this week. All right. And keep in mind, prior to this, I didn't know, like, most of the tea. Like, I'd only heard of, like, the Umbrella Man theory, which we'll go into. But, like, that was, like, the only one I knew. Mm-hmm. But there's wild ones. So, mm-hmm. buckle up. But here's my intro. 
<clears throat> oh wait, I will tell my sources first because I always forget and you always do. Okay, we got the jfklibrary.org, nbcnews.com, and townandcountrymagazine.com. Great. <laughs> Those are my websites. So, on November 21st, 1963, President Kennedy, accompanied by his wife, Jacqueline Kennedy, and Vice President Johnson, undertook a two-day, five-city fundraising trip to Texas. The next morning, after making a speech in a parking lot in front of the hotel in which he had stayed, and then speaking again at a Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce breakfast, Kennedy and his party made a short flight to Dallas's Love Airport. At the airport, the president and the first lady shook hands with members of a hospitable crowd before boarding the back seat of a customized open convertible to ride with Democratic Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife to the president's next stop, the Trade Mart, where Kennedy was scheduled to deliver another speech. An estimated 200,000 people lined the roughly 10-mile route to the Trade Mart. As the motorcade turned southwest on Elm Street and began traveling through Dealey Plaza on the edge of downtown Dallas, the president's convertible passed the Multisuri Texas School Book Depository Building. Moments later, at about 12.30 p.m., shots rang out. A bullet pierced the base of the neck of the president, exited through the throat, and then likely Ooh. passed through the Governor Connolly's shoulder and wrist, ultimately hitting his thigh. Another bullet struck Kennedy in the back of his head. The motorcade rushed to nearby Parkland Memorial Hospital, reaching it quickly. However, doctors' efforts were futile. Kennedy was officially declared dead at 1 p.m., Connolly survived his wounds, and speculation soon ensued that conspiracy was at the root of his assassination. So that's yeah. that's right off the bat. That's like I didn't know that it was like he was assassinated around like twelve thirty p.m. and yeah. they pronounced him dead by like one, 1 p.m. That is a quick turnover. I know that's crazy. I didn't realize it was like literally like maybe thirty minutes or less. Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's wild. Also, I didn't know like. I literally knew nothing about the JFK assassination. Like, I feel At like... all? Till well, now. Well, I knew he was assassinated. I knew, like, some of the tea. But, like, I didn't know a mm -hmm. lot of the surrounding information. Like, I feel like those memories from school kind of just... Yeah, elementary school, left. gone. Like, I didn't I knew, even go. Like, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> homeschool. But, yeah, I didn't know much about me and a new little bit of JFK. But, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff in here that, like, really paints the picture to understand what actually happened to him. I don't remember a lot, but I... I, maybe we've talked about it before, but I've I've actually visited Dallas before, and also the JFK really? um, assassination. They made like a they made a museum out of the place where he was like shot from, like where I believe they like the window of like where it oh, happened. They yeah. turned that whole building into a museum and stuff. Well, it's like a memorial, or is it just a museum? It, it's or probably a, a memorial. I was like eight, so I don't okay. remember, but I just know it had like art, not art, like historical like things inside of it like education on jfk and wow. stuff um it is a little wild in there because the the it's kind of weird mm -hmm. but they have like on the road where he was shot they have stars like yellow stars marked where the bullets landed and like where oh. he was shot like they have like oh yeah this star you're standing on right now this is where he was shot and then also they have like uh like ones were like oh this is where we found a stray bullet it was it was weird that's so morbid like if you like, think about it like, i mean ooh. i guess it's good historically that like they like have that evidence there but it is a little wild they picked a yellow like gold star they to said, be like he's so cute <laughs> like good job cute. good job it's gold star like you did it you killed him like no ooh. like that no yeah so i don't remember much either so i'm excited but i do know that uh i had gone before and it was it was pretty interesting do you think it's worth the visit for someone if they were like highly into historical things yeah like, i think it's worth seeing i mean i was eight so i thought it was super cool okay i probably would think it's cool now but i think what made it better was that was i was eight so i was super short so everything looked giant so cool and everything was bigger than life yeah. but i think it's worth seeing okay i think okay. izzy's been before okay and because she's from texas i always so. forget that yeah so i think she said that she liked it too. Okay, well, I'll definitely yeah. have to visit because that's wild. It's wild to be at the. We're going there if we get ten million. <laughs> if we get ten million, hit us up. <laughs> hit us up. So now we're going to talk a little bit about his presidency, just so we have some backstory to like some of the theories why, and why everything happened. Yeah. So buckle in for some info. Get all cozy. <laughs> get all cutesy. So this is about JFK becomes the thirty fifth president of the United States. So JFK was sworn in as the thirty fifth president on January twentieth, nineteen sixty one. President Kennedy, together with his wife and two children, brought a new youthful spirit to the White House. 
The Kennedys believed that the White House should be a place to celebrate American history, culture, and achievement. They invited artists, writers, scientists, poets, musicians, actors, and athletes to visit them. That was a lot. De -de 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 -de. Dang, everybody. <laughs> All of the above. Um, Jacqueline Kennedy also shared her husband's interest in American history. Gathering some of the finest art and furniture the United States has produced, she restored all the rooms in the White House to make it a place that truly reflected America's history and artistic creativity. Everyone was impressed and appreciated her hard work. So that's something I had also heard about, like, that she made the, like, her Didn't she taste. start the trend? Yeah. She of, like, started the trend of, like, the, the first lady always does stuff like that? Yeah, does a lot of furnishing and everything. Did you ever watch, I remember when, like, Obama was in office... Um, they would do like Christmas specials. Yeah, and, like, Michelle like decorating Michelle the White does House. it. It was so oh, pretty. It was so cute. And their dog, Damn. their whatever the name Bo. What was that black dog? Black dog's name. But they had the dog in the little series thing. It was so Aww. cute. Of, like when they decorated the White House. I, I remember like, seeing I clips it. of it. It looked so good. And then remember what? what Melania was afterwards. I didn't see hers. Was it not cute? It was Girl. probably like all white stuff. <laughs> oh, not white stuff. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. But it probably had like old like so. No, you're probably things. right though. I meant like it was all just like what's that barnyard barn house aesthetic that's like all black and white. Yeah. That's what I meant, but I can it makes sense both ways. Yeah, no. But. See, I just remember like <laughs> people were posting really like bad photos of it. It was like tiny little like big uh what's the word like tiny little shaggy like trees and stuff like everything Ooh. barely decorate it was wild Isn't it was like what you'd wild expect from, like kim kardashian's house on christmas Wh have you seen her house it's pretty much just like all it's simple like it's very minimalistic to a point that it's like does anyone even live here like, it's almost like, not minimalistic it was almost like less bad taste less interesting then and it's already pretty interesting imagine mm -hmm. you're going through the kmart section kmart section the kmart mm -hmm. store yeah and you're looking at the christmas section and they have all the demonstrations up imagine oh. that but way less cool okay. that's what she was doing so just like poor taste and like poor yeah that's it was sad. wild it was wild michelle obama could never she was beautiful taste i'm sure just like just like her mm -hmm. miss jacqueline kennedy they so, wouldn't do pitch perfect they <laughs> They wouldn't do perfect. Uh, the White House also seemed like a fun place because of the Kennedys' two young children, Caroline and John John. They called him John John, which is kind of cute, but a little weird. You do your thing, though. Um, there was a preschool, a swimming pool, and a tree house. Oh, my gosh. Outside of the White House lawn. I didn't know they had a tree house on the lawn. That is so sweet. Aww. I'm going to look at a picture. Cute. Um, President <laughs> Kennedy was probably the busiest man in the country, but he still found time to laugh and play with his children. However, the president also had many worries. One of the things he worried about most was the possibility of nuclear war between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. He knew that if, if there was a war, millions of people would die. Since World War II, there had been like a lot of anger and suspicion between the two countries, but never any actual shooting between Soviet and American troops. The Cold War, which was unlike any other war the world had seen, was really a struggle between the Soviet Union's communist system of government and the United States' democratic system. Mm. Because they distrusted each other, both countries spent enormous amounts of money building nuclear weapons. There were many times when the struggle between the Soviet Union and the U.S. could have ended in nuclear war. So President Kennedy worked long hours, getting up at 7 and not going to bed until 11 or 12 at night or later. He read six newspapers while he ate breakfast, had meetings with important people throughout the day, and read reports from his advisors. That's a, that's a standard undergraduate college Yeah, day. I was like, okay, he 7 He said 7 to 11, girl. I'm up later than that, and I got up at 7, so. Try me. Do the math. I barely got sleep. So he wanted to make sure that he made the best decisions for his country. And he would say, I'm asking each of you to be new pioneers on the new frontier, is what he had said. The new frontier was not a place, but a way of thinking and acting. President Kennedy wanted the U.S. to move forward into the future with new discoveries in science and improvements in education, employment, and other fields. He wanted democracy and freedom for the whole world. One of the first things President Kennedy did was to create the Peace Corps. Throughout this program, which still exists today, Americans can volunteer to work anywhere in the world where assistance is needed. They can help in areas such as education, farming, healthcare, and construction. Many young men and women have served as Peace Corps volunteers and have won the respect of people throughout the world. I didn't know he made the Peace Corps. I didn't know that either. What? I, I didn't know that. Do people still like actively join the Peace Corps? I... Because the only reason I know is because I saw a YouTube ad for it recently? two weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. About like getting people to join. Because I was going to say, I feel like I always heard about it when I was younger. Like the yeah. Peace Corps was this huge thing. And like, was, I was like, like pop ooh, culture. that sounds so cute. But, yeah. 
never Legally Blonde joining the Peace Corps. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. that. But yeah, I just never thought it was still happening. That's great if it is, though. But I don't know if I joined. I don't know if it's going well. They had to make an ad <laughs> to get mm. people to join. I'm, I, know, I don't know, though. I know it's I don't for know. good things, but it does sound a little culty. But <laughs> that could just be my fear of cults. I don't know. I'm going to look right now real If quick. it's still real or if, how you do it. Yeah, they're still a thing. They're still they're still doing a the thing. They're still they're still cooking. I like what they're about, but I think I'd have to look into it to see. If it's, they're in over if it's sixty cool. countries right now. If it's not cool, if, if that's not a good thing, let us know. I have no idea what they do still. Peace yeah. for. But yes. that's wild. I didn't know he made but it. Yeah, so he made it with the best intentions. Um, President Kennedy was also eager for the United States to lead the way of exploring space. So the Soviet Union was ahead of the United States in its space program, and President Kennedy was determined to catch up. So, like, he was mm-hmm. like, let's get to the front lines of this space race, besties. Yeah. So he said, no nations which expects to be a leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in the race for space. Kennedy was the first president to ask Congress to approve more than $22 billion for Project Apollo which had the goal of landing an American man on the moon before the end of the decade. Which, we know they did it. We know they did. Well, did they? Spoilers. <laughs> did they? So I'm on the theory that it actually happened. I don't know what I believe. That could be a whole other episode or mini episode. Where'd all that money go then? Unless they just lied. Million. They said, to decorate the White House, and he was 22 million? <laughs> oh, the tree house. <laughs> For the tree house. They had the Tree Masters guy, like, be there before you. He's probably, like, a little child. They're like, okay, it's your first one, Messy. <laughs> He's, like, five and has, like, little twins. <laughs> Just for the children. He's friends with the kids. Stop. This is the Laura Treehouse Master Man. He literally built the treehouse with those children. Oh, His first project ever was building for the Kennedy children. And they let what him is... have the le- rest to do a show. Yeah, they said, here's the rest of $22 billion. <laughs> That's how he was able to make the show. That was the whole budget. He's truly living his best life. So, moving on, President Kennedy had to deal with many serious problems here in the U.S. The biggest problem of all was racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Supreme Court had ruled in 1954 that segregation in public schools would no longer be permitted. Black and white children, the decision mandated, should go to school together. This was now the law of the land. However, there were many schools, especially in southern states, that did not obey the law. There was also racial segregation on buses and restaurants, movie theaters, and other places. Mm. Thousands of Americans joined together, people of all races and backgrounds, to peacefully protest this injustice. So Martin Luther King Jr. was one of the famous leaders, as you know, of the movement for civil rights. Many civil rights leaders didn't think President Kennedy was supportive enough of further efforts. The president believed that holding public protests would only anger more white people and make it even more difficult to convince the members of Congress who didn't agree with him to pass civil rights laws. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Um, By June 11th, 1963, however, President Kennedy decided that the time had come to take stronger action to help the civil rights struggle. Yay! Um, He proposed a new new civil rights bill to the Congress, and he went on television asking Americans to end racism. 100 years of a delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their hearts, their grandsons, or their heirs, their grandsons, are not fully free, he said. The nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds, and on the principle that all men are created equal. President Kennedy made it clear that all Americans, regardless of their skin color, should enjoy a good and happy life in the United States. Right. So, in the end, he was doing the thing. Like, he was doing his best to, like, make this, America beautiful. This, I mean, we're probably, we'll get to it later, yeah. but I'm assuming, does this play into assassination theories at all? Like, people did not yeah, like that? Yeah, a little that. bit of, yeah. Okay, I had a feeling. Because anytime people want to do something good for like the civil there, rights yeah, movement, are there's, trash a lot of, out there and mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who are not very happy about it. Yeah, which is mm. disgusting. But I'm really glad that like he was sticking up for people back then because especially yeah. back then, like there was no one really fighting really, against it. I didn't really realize he like did like, any of that, it. you know? Yeah. Like I knew he was like, he, he was yeah. one of like America's like sweethearts, right? Like he made like yeah, a big he was like. Beloved. He was beloved by, like, a lot of people. I just think it's, like, wild, because I feel like I'd never hear about, like... The racial what, side. Yeah, or, like, what he, like, did, like, when he was, like, in office. I feel like I only hear about, like, the yeah. assassination and the underlying tones of, like, mm-hmm. what caused that. Not, like, fully yeah. what he did. Like, especially at this time, like, when everything was going on, like, socially and politically, I think mm. it was really great that, like, at the heart of it, he was trying to focus on things that would actively yeah. make America and, like, the world a better place, like the Peace Corps and all, like, the racial stuff. Yeah. Like, he was really I mean, him saying it's been over, like, 
like a hundred years like this has yeah. to stop because like what we're in 2023 now and there's still like it's still happening a lot of issues yeah, yeah. exactly and the fact, so it's yeah like, back then he was literally saying lincoln said this how long ago and this is still an issue yeah like, like we're still heirs, doing this your heirs your families are still doing this stuff like yeah basically like grow up like come on now <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. literally went on TV and said, I need you all to grow up. Yeah, stop being stupid, Please. open your eyes, and just love people, God forbid. Right. But, yeah, so this is, like, his height of, like, beauty. Mm. <laughs> then we get to him being shot. Mm. Oh! Alrighty, sorry about that, guys. We had a little technical difficulty, and now there's a cat in the frame. So if you now see we the got kitty a cat. cat, she's here, she's thriving. We had issues with the, the, the joys of technology. Yeah. It was a good time, and now we're doing uh, this on my phone, so if there's a drop in quality or it's the same quality. Here we are. So You're audio here. might be a little different, but you know, we're thriving and surviving today. You know I what guess. they say, the show must go on. The show must go on. And we're doing that, and now almost an hour later. <laughs> yes, for, it was a little time jump for us, all this way. Yes, but, but we're going to get back into it. we're going to move into it. Yes, we're going to get into the, the bulk of the bang and the buck, that's the words I'm trying to say, <laughs> but we're going to talk about the assassination so, on November 21st, 1963, President Kennedy flew to Texas to give several political speeches. The next day, on November 22nd, as his car drove slowly past cheering crowds in Dallas, shots rang out. Kennedy was seriously wounded and died a short time later. Within a few hours of the shooting, police arrested Lee Harvey Oswald and mm-hmm. charged him with murder. I remember the name. The name. I remember the name. Mr. Oswald. Oswald, Oswald, Oswald shot jfk like the the, te- the tentacle oh, monster the, the octopus yeah he's got all the guns the little blue guy. <laughs> <I don't laughs> for every like one. a harm i don't remember that special but he just he had them all yeah for the w- children's show oswald <laughs> they had him hold guns nick jr would have been more fun with that like franklin yeah. gun little bear little bear gun, gun. oh little bear absolutely no. needed <laughs> wouldn't but franklin would franklin franklin have you seen this is this is so off topic have you yeah. seen on tiktok mm-hmm. people sharing franklin clips no franklin is rude like <laughs> is it like how caillou is just brutal yeah like he's like calling people out and he's like okay we get it like leave me alone like oh my gosh he, franklin's evil like truly i need to rewatch franklin i don't remember deadly squad except <laughs> it was pretty and he was i almost called him a frog he's a turtle <laughs> Turtle, frog, tomato, tomato. What's but. the difference between Kermit and Franklin? Nothing. To you. You're so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Well, except Kermit's a little too much for me. Mm. I'll say it. You don't like Kermit the Frog? He's a little annoying. Humbly. Is that good, guys? No. Oh. Anyway, JFK. Good work. <laughs> JFK. So, yeah, Mr. Oswald guy was charged with murder. On November 24th, another man, Jack Ruby, shot and killed Oswald. Ruby and Max, it all comes back. Why is it all actually connecting to Max and Ruby? Would it make sense because they were like children at that time? Not the 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 people who made Oswald and Max and Ruby. They were kids, so by the time it got to us. Their influence. Their influence. They said, okay, Oswald. uh, JFK connects to everything. He created Nick Jr. Actually, Nick Jr. was the one that, I can't say that. I'm like, nope. if I ever nope. work in children's nope. media, I can't nope. say that uh, Nickelodeon did Cease JFK. and desist, girl. Cease Nickelodeon and des- did the assassination. I'll say it. <laughs> Just this once. They're going to be canceled anyway soon, probably. Nick right? <laughs> Jr.? No, Nickelodeon. They're like, you ever watch the documentary that's like the orange documentary thing? No. It's on Hulu. It's all about like Nickelodeon's fall from like their... Dang. Their beautiful glory days of the 90s, 2000s, and then they just mm. slowly been collapsing. But yeah, Oswald <laughs> Oswald did it, and he was killed by another guy named Jack Ruby. So thus silenced the only person who could have offered more information about this tragic event. So like, Ruby killed the only person that could say anything about it. Like, Dang. what actually happened? Domino effect. Literal domino effect. But the Warren Commission was organized to investigate the assassination and to clarify the many questions which remained. And one of the biggest questions that remained was, how many shooters were there? So, like, mm. some people think that, like, Oswald wasn't the only person who shot him. Oh, and that's like why multiple. they were like, oh, he was silenced because he could have had the only information oh. saying who the other shooter was. Like, Because he might have given it away if they gave him, like, some type of, like, plea deal or yeah. something. Ooh. Or so they could have known, like, how it happened. Because there's some things that don't make sense Ooh. for it to just be one shooter. And that's why people say, like, Ooh. it's two. And, like, we'll get more into that. I but, didn't realize that. Yeah. That's they think it was a more than one man job. Ooh. 
but two-man yes. job. So how many shooters were there is the main question. At least One two. The, at, le- <laughs> at, at least two. How many people does it take to screw in a light bulb? One. Less. <laughs> so... Uh, One of the main questions around the Kennedy assassination was whether Lee Harvey Oswald was the only person shooting at the president in Dallas that November day in 1963. Investigators had found three bullet castings on the sixth floor of the Texas school book depository where Oswald had been shooting from. Audio evidence found there had been another shooter who had once fired. The official congressional investigation found that Oswald's first shot had missed the second it hit Kennedy, and the third it hit and killed him. Mm. So, three shots. Um, the other shooter had missed. The investigation concluded. These findings were based on the testimony of noted University of California Irvine chemist Dr. Vincent C. Guin. He claimed that each individual bullet was chemically unique. By looking at the fragments of bullets that were recovered from Kennedy's body and from Texas Governor John Connolly, who was also shot that day, and he survived. Um, Gwynn determined that there were only two and only two bullets fired by Oswald that struck Kennedy and Connolly. So Gwynn's testimony may have been as accurate as possible in the 1970s. By the 1980s, FBI agents were routinely testifying in court that bullets from the same manufacturing batch were chemically indistinguishable. So this will come into play in a little bit soon, that they were chemically indistinguishable. So investigating more deeply... So, flash forward to late 2004, Stuart Wexler, a high school social studies teacher in Highstown, New Jersey, was examining this very contradiction. He wanted to help with the study of the brand of bullets thought to have been used by Oswald to kill the president. Mm. Wexler and a chemist friend of his had brought a group of Western Winchester Cartridge Company Mantler Cacarno bullets. So, that's a lot of words for It's a, a lot bullet. of words that I will that's never understand. I'm like, I don't know bullets. We talked about it in one episode. I've heard, I've heard of... Um... That they used bullets to figure out, like, in the JFK, like, assassination would happen. Because you mm-hmm. said, like, they knew that Oswald did two of them. Yeah. Um, I know that's, like, probably based off, like, the type of gun or, like, caliber it is. Because yeah. they're all, like, different. Mm-hmm. I have no idea how to measure that. But that's just I'm, pop culture information, I know. <laughs> I know. Diddly squat about them. So then to verify uh, Gwyn's assum- assumption that bullets were individually chemically distinct... He wanted to analyze the bullet fragments using science-based techniques not available to investigators the decades earlier. So as a team, they put together with two chemists, a metallurgist, and two stod... St- I can't say this word. Statisticians. So, yeah, statisticians. Sta- 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 statisticians. <laughs> I literally in my in my notes right here, guys. So you know, I literally wrote it out like phonetically, so I could still read it. And I it's still, still can't read it's it. still hard. So I knew Tiffany you're not gonna be able to say it. I still can't say it. It's statisticians. Statisticians. Very statisticians. They use neuron activation. <laughs> so they use neuron activation analysis to measure the chemical composition of the bullets. The process irritates the bullets and then measures the gamma rays the radioactive bullets emit to reveal their chemical compositions. So specifically, they wanted to test Guin's claim that each bullet was chemically distinguishable from each other. So if that wasn't true, they also hoped to identify whether any of their bullets matched any of the bullet fragments from the Kennedy assassination investigation. So they analyzed 30 bullets and found that all but one matched at least one of the other bullets in the batch. So the one that didn't match any others we tested, they had said, did actually match the fragments taken from the Kennedy's head. So this meant that Gwyn's was incorrect. Individual bullets did not have uniquely identifiable chemical components. In fact, the number of bullets in- involved could have been as few as the two Gwyn claimed, or oh. as many as five. So given the congressional conclusion that there had been four shots, it remains possible that Oswald was not the only shooter who hit the president. and that Because there's one not accounted for? Yeah. Basically, I know math. You know math, and that Oswald may not have fired the fatal shot. So, like, mm. after all of this analysis of like the bullets and like everything, would that being... become attempted murder then? Like, I if guess he's, so. If he's but... not the one who did it, I guess so. But he's dead, so like, well, it doesn't really matter now. But everyone still thinks he's the main person that did it. But like, oh, it's proven that it may not have been the fatal shot. That someone else could have shot the fatal shot. Oh. Sh- shot the fatal bullet. Yeah, like was like it was somebody else, but they have no mm-hmm. idea because they they killed him before like they could, right? 
Yeah, but that's that was the wild. shot that killed him in the head. Where was the fifth shot? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And then it leads to more questions, like, who else shot JFK, and, like, why did they shoot him? Mm-hmm. So, at least a thousand books have been written about the assassination of President JFK, but conspiracy theorists are still whispering about who actually pulled the trigger. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe she did it. She did it. Poor Marilyn. Happy birthday, Mr. President. She's on our wall. I wonder if they can see her from up there. Marilyn Monroe. Oh. Stop, everything's all connected. <laughs> ah, the thing I thought was it. A... Don't you say it. It's stunning. Logan doesn't like art. And Lexi, my beautiful friend, made this beautiful artwork. And Logan is a hater. Listen, I just have terrible vision. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on. I, I, yeah. I have Ariana Grande eyes. From afar, I thought it was a giraffe smoking uh, two cigarettes in like each <laughs> Logan just has terrible eyes. Get them checked. Go to an eye doctor. Don't you have glasses? Put yeah, them. I'm not wearing them all the time. Reconsider. You gotta look pretty for the camera. Aw. Well, get your eyes checked. And also the self-reflecting ones were an extra 75, and I wasn't doing that. Mm, understanding. But that artwork <laughs> is beautiful. Reconsider your choices. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I Good love job, it. Lexi. Tee but let's Maybe, get into the theories. <laughs> Yay! Theory time. Yay, I was theories. excited for this. Okay, so the main one I brought up briefly at the very beginning is the Umbrella Man theory. Yeah, so Umbrella for Man! people who let's don't go. know, let's get into what it is, because I didn't know much about it before, so here we go. So a person popularly dubbed the Umbrella Man has been the object of much speculation, as he was the only person seen carrying and opening an umbrella on that sunny day. He was also one of the closest bystanders to President JFK when Kennedy was first struck by a bullet. Mm -hmm. As Kennedy's limousine approached, the man opened up and lifted the umbrella high above his head, then spun or panned the umbrella from east to west, so like clockwise motion. So weird. As the president passed by him, so he did that when he passed by him, in the aftermath of the assassination, the umbrella man sat down on the sidewalk next to another man before getting up and walking towards a Texas school book depository. The fact that both men sat there so calmly after the shooting has raised suspicion. Because mm-hmm. why were they so chill? Why were after Why were you happened? chill about it? Yeah. And wasn't it um, a sunny day? Also yeah, that day? day, there so was like, no why? rain, no chance yeah. of like clouds or anything. Like it was completely clear. Exactly, and like the only thing I can Crazy. think is like if you have super sensitive skin, sometimes you do have to have an umbrella. But like yeah, because it's hot out. I don't know. Little suspicious in the way he like lifted up as it was happening. Like it's like it yeah, was, it's very yeah, weird. Trying to point something out. Yeah, I guess, but no one else had an umbrella too. No. I guess like you know if it's if a special thing, but wouldn't more people have one? That it's yeah. just weird. But early speculation came from the assassination researchers Josiah and Richard, who noticed the open umbrella in a series of photographs. So Thompson and Sprague suggested that the umbrella man may have been acting as a signaler of some mm-hmm. kind, opening his umbrella to signal "go ahead." and then raising it to communicate fire a second round to another gunman. The Umbrella Man is depicted as performing such a role in Oliver Stone's film, JFK, and the X-Files episode called Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man, which I watched today in preparation because I was like... Was it good? I need to watch X-Files. I have more... I have more time on my hands, so I yeah. should I should take it up. It's on Hulu, right? Yes, on Hulu. Okay. Oh my gosh, you have to update me if you do it. Okay. Because I know sometimes you can be like, I need to watch it, but do we ever after this? Isn't we'll it forty it. minute episodes? Yeah. Okay. It's worth it. I say cool. just keep diving in. But this episode is in season four. But mm, okay. Good, good episode. Also, the Umbrella Academy. Oh yeah, was like, that part you... of it? Oh yeah, like the the um the big. Like the Umbrella Man is like a huge part of like that overarching plot. Is it in and, season like, two? Yeah. I think I, mean, I remember most, vaguely because yeah. I watched bits and pieces with you guys. Yeah, but... it's it's bananas. It is okay. wild. Ooh, I'll have to like, look into that. Like, I don't want to spoil much because I think it's a cool, like, reveal, but it all comes back to, like, JFK's... Ass- it's wild. Whoa. It is wild. Okay, okay. So, moving on, another theory proposed by conspiracy theorist Robert B. Cutler and endorsed by Colonel L. Fletcher Prouty is that the Umbrella Man may have used to fire a dart with a paralyzing agent Kennedy to immobilize his muscles and make him a sitting duck for an assassination. Mm. Journalist Penn Jones Jr. was approached by someone who mentioned the name of Louis Stephen Witt. When he was tracked down, he barely wanted to interact with journalists, but offered to testify before the HSCA. His statement of only holding up the umbrella did not reflect what he actually did at the moment as he was moving the umbrella during the moment of the shooting. An idea speculated, uh, yeah, so like he was moving it as... As it was happening. Yeah, like he moved so it So it wasn't like a signal. signal. Yeah. Well, oh. Before, I guess, he, oh. would, he put it up and then he... And then it was guiding motion. it, basically, like being like... Yeah, like a 
signal of like, okay, shoot now. Oh. Second round's now. Like it was very oh, like Oh, like a tempo, a, like a signal. One, two, yeah. th- oh, that's Like it was wild. like he was signaling for certain things to happen as he was moving the umbrella or like putting it up in certain ways. What? So they're like, mm, that's a little shady. But an idea speculated by the HSCA is that the umbrella may have been held as a symbol of protest regarding the US government's failure to provide an umbrella of air support during the Bay of Pigs invasion. So they think that's kind of why the Umbrella Man existed. Oh, what? Which, I don't know. I feel like they were kind of reaching because they were, like, called an Umbrella of Air Support. I feel like they're just kind of looking for something to tie that together. Yeah. He could have just been holding an umbrella to signal. Yeah, I, I mean, believe be more about too. the sun idea. More. Yeah, the like, holding it for the sun. But, like... But also, wouldn't he have brought more uh, protesters with him? I mean, if it's the only person, yeah. So. But, like, usually it's, like, a group yeah. activity. Like, unless these people were, hmm. like, all conspiring to kill the president and that was their protest. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of dumb. Like, I yeah. agree that their, like, reasoning could be something with, like, the yeah. Bay of Pigs invasion. But, like... I don't think the umbrella stood for the umbrella of support during the bail. Like, it just yeah. seems like they're trying to put... I mean, I really agree with the idea of, like, the signaling thing, because people, yeah. like, I don't know, just, like, black would be, like, the perfect color to see on, like, a sunny day like that to be mm-hmm. able to see the signal. If you would have oh, yeah. picked white, you couldn't see it. Um, and if you were to do a vibrant color, it would be too harsh on the eyes, probably. Yeah, also, you'd really or, stick out. Like You'd stick out like a sore thumb. Even though he was clearly yeah. sticking out with the whole umbrella. But I mean, yeah, st- he was still sticking out. But, like, I feel like if that's the signal you're going for, like, mm-hmm. that's what I would do. Because anything else, like, is going to, like, be weird. Like, yeah. Especially, like, if you do, like, I don't know... You can't do, like, tips of the hat or, like, there's no good sign other than a big umbrella that's yeah, black for you to see. Yeah, then you could just be yeah. like, I need it for the sun. Like, Cause I, you could find a way to, yeah. I don't know, validate what you're doing. Because I said this earlier, but, like, I saw, like, where, like, he was, sh- like, shot from. Yeah. Like, how they were up really high. Mm-hmm. Like, I think quite a few stories. So, if you're looking down at that, you're not going you like, to, like, see. something to signal you. Yeah, you're going to notice a giant black umbrella. I think that's... <laughs> week like it yeah i mean i think the theory is like strong that it was signaling but like saying that it's like based off a something else protest. like like i don't the know only way is i think if they were combined the reason they're doing it could be it was an act of like they're doing it as because they were affected by it if that makes any sense like yeah affected by the invasion of the right it could yeah. it could be both but i don't think it's just protest yeah I don't know. like it mm, mm. it seems like they're trying to have a cop especially because there's bullets not accounted for and there's a possibility there's more than two accomplices i don't know i don't know the if you're gonna happen. assassinate a mm-hmm. president you're gonna need more than one person behind it like, yeah and like there could be more people that were included in like he was signaling plan. more than one person like there was a whole thing behind it but yeah i just think what they had said it was like an umbrella, blah, blah, blah. I, don't I know. just, like, th- there's yeah. been other theories we've done that they've talked about, like, the... Oh, but this is what we actually think it is. Every yeah. time we've done it, I've been like, yeah, no, I could see how it's this point. I think this point's a little... Well, a little silly. Yeah, well, no. But now we can get on to the second theory. Marilyn Pass- Monroe. <laughs> no. Damn. Close. It was a mob hit. Not close at all. Yay. This is the second theory, that it was a mob hit. So, the Kennedys were no strangers to organized crime, in fact, some believe the mafia helped JFK steal the election in 1960 mm. by securing votes in the key state of Illinois. I didn't know that, and that's wild, thinking that the mafia helped him win the election. It all comes back to either mafia, mafia. aliens, or... Murder in the 70s. Murder in the 70s. 70s be The three people. core elements of the mystery files. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Murders in the 70s. It's the holy trinity <laughs> of the mystery files. I love God. I know I say it all the this time. This Holy Trinity, me, me, you, Luna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I love God. I'm always scared I'm going to get something I love the devil. Me. Don't say that. Stop saying that. Call me. going to get us <laughs> attacked by demons. But however. They're already here. They need to. In not, your bathroom. They better not be in here. <laughs> they consider, I can't have that in my house. <laughs> so however, another conspiracy theory has the political dynasty of odds with the mob. So this theory hinges on the fact that Kennedy was unsuccessful in overthrowing Fidel Castro in Cuba, meaning that the mafia-run casinos remained shut down, and that his brother, Robert Kennedy, was cracking down on the mob in his role as attorney general, pursuing a case against Jimmy Hoffa. So Robert Kennedy had a fear that he had somehow gotten his own brother killed, 
quote. Oh. So, and he was killed in, like, the war. So according to biographer Evan Thomas, this is said, that Robert Kennedy's attempts to prosecute the mob and to kill Castro had backfired in some terrible way, had blown back, as the intelligence folks say. Bobby thought that he'd killed, not his brother, and now he was had this daunting, horrible realization or fear that all of his attempts to get the mob and to get Castro have in some terrible way blown up and come back to haunt his family and Ooh. resulted in the death of the president's brother. So oh. they're thinking that there was some sort of... Interesting. Like an inner law. Oh, it was like a big... Uh, mm-hmm. Like, what's the word? Like, needing to pay up, kind of. Like, revenge, yeah. like... Like, you're trying to take down the mob, Ooh. you're trying to take down Castro. Well, he where it really hurts and kill your brother is basically Ooh. what the vibe is. And it's the president, too, so it's, yeah. like, even, like, more, like... And, like, mm. I could kind of see that, because, like... It'd be a big, like... I don't want to say, like, trophy, but kind of also trophy. Yeah, like, like, I could see them being like, brother. this is a big hit. Yeah. This would be a big hit for so the brother. So watch your back. It's yeah. a warning, and then they mm-hmm. come after him next because Ooh. maybe he didn't take their threat seriously or, like... That's wild. So that was theory number two, that it was a mob hit. Ooh. So the third one, we're about to get in some wild ones. So oh, excited! Up, okay. The next one is that the government did it. Ah, bum, bum, bum. It's always the government. It's always the government. Except I'm, I'm kind of lying. Please don't uh, take away don't my... Don't put a chip uh, in my head and take my rights yeah, away. please don't take it away. <laughs> not please. like they haven't already. I enjoy not having to pay student loans. Thanks, Biden. Thanks, Biden. <laughs> we all <started> crying. <laughs> huh, thanks, Biden. Did you <laughs> sign up for the SAVE plan? Yes, I did. Thank God. Me too. Okay. The government did it. <laughs> Perhaps the most frightening theory in... <laughs> I can't. I love America. Home of the sleigh. (laughs) Perhaps the most frightening theory in circulation is that the Kennedy assassination was an inside job. According to biographer Philip Shannon, that was probably Bobby's first thought. Apparently, Bobby Kennedy's first suspicion was that it was some rogue element in the CIA. Hi, Luna Cat. She's stretching. She is just taking her time. So Philip Shannon told NBC News that um, it was some rogue element in the CIA. However, after a meeting with CIA director John McCone, Kennedy changed his mind. Mm-hmm. You're distracted by Miss Girl. I was listening out of this left ear. Out of the, that one ear. But the public was harder to sway. Of course, an organization that shrouded in secrecy and had a motive. So the CIA leaders were notably angry with Kennedy over the Bay of Pigs invasion. So is always going to be the suspect. But the organization maintains it had nothing to do with the crime. So, quote, while the CIA conspiracy theories make good fodder for movies, they are pure fiction, CIA spokesman Edward Price told NBC. Mm. Other insider assassination theories have included a story where William Greer, the driver of the president's car, turned around and shot JFK, a premise based on a poor copy of this Zapruder film, which is a film that showed the assassination of JFK. Mm. But, I've heard of that theory before, that it was him, but, like, that, everyone would have seen that, right? Yeah, I like, feel like, unless, so... like, he snuck something, like, behind him. Like, he's driving too i mean frankly yeah. it's at like five miles an hour but but it's also like to for him to have known exactly where jfk in the moment was to have shot him perfectly especially yeah. and in the back of the head how was he able to shoot him in the back of the head yeah there's I don't, no that's stupid way like especially like also there's like so many uh eyewitnesses there yeah. there's uh vice president and uh jackie kennedy mm-hmm. there's like you have three people who are in the car with you already. Yeah. I think, wasn't there a driver? there was also two other people. Yeah, there was multiple people, it was, I, I think. think. It was the vice president and maybe his wife, I don't remember. But yeah, I know there was, a, that car was filled. It was filled, so like to actively be able to do that. I just mm-hmm. don't think that's a very solid one. I don't mm-hmm. know, at least that half of the theory. I yeah. Don't think, I think that's kind of dumb. Yeah, I just, personally. Uh, they could have done a more interesting thing. Like, I'm kind of, I'm so yeah. Umbrella Man right now. I was like, why can't the Umbrella Man be a part of the yeah. government? Like, the, the, tie your theories if, together, if people. If the Umbrella Man was the government, then I think have it'd be we, good. Are we not taking creative writing classes over Come here? On. Let's let's Let's, let's start tie tying things ends. together. Yeah, let's tie put it up. all together. Let's make a resolution. Well, if you want a really good one, let's our go. next theory, this one ties perfect. It is that the alien cover-up theory was the reason. Yes! So this yes! theory yes! is wild. There's so much detail. Ooh, oh my god. I love it. We know we love I love aliens. We love aliens. They're stunning. You so love aliens. <laughs> I love aliens. <laughs> so a story that combines UFO cover-ups with the assassination of JFK is a goldmine for conspiracy theorists like me. And that's just what author William Lester says. He uncovered while conducting research for a new book on Kennedy, 
a memo written by JFK and addressed to the CIA in which the president requests confidential information about UFOs. Oh. So in the never-before-seen top-secret memo supposedly written on November 12, 1963, the president ordered the CIA director to organize the agency's intelligence files relating to UFOs mm. and to debrief him on all unknowns by the following February. Ten days later, Kennedy was assassinated oh. after like wanting to get all of these files yeah, I'm like, hmm, this cool. is interesting. And now we're literally like having and now alien like, debates real. on the Supreme Court, and yeah. they're all real. <laughs> well, because wasn't there like some talk recently about these certain files? I feel like I heard vaguely about. Yeah, there's been a lot was, of like, stuff. He was gone. trying to get those files back then. The people were talking about it a little bit recently. Yeah. So the newly surfaced document is bound to add fuel to the undying fire surrounding the president's death. But first things first, is the document authentic? There's something odd about it. Lester, a paranormal researcher and author of the new book, A Celebration of Freedom, JFK and the New Frontier, had said he obtained the memo along with two others from the CIA under the Freedom of Information Act and said, quote, the government regularly declassifies documents after a certain amount of time goes by. And then you have a file to request for those documents. So Lester told Life's Little Mysteries, a sister site of space.com, quote again, when I was in the process of filing, those letters had just become declassified and released to the public. So this happened in around 2006 or 2007. Mm -hmm. So Lester said at the time, I think other people were getting them too. The top secret memo hasn't turned up anywhere else beside Lester's book, however, and some archivists question its authenticity. A research technician at the JFK Library in Boston who asked not to be named, was unable to find a carbon copy of this presidential archive, which holds copies of all of JFK's letters. So, like, now oh. they're like, why is this not... Where is it at? Like, what's why are the Why are the letters, like, what? Yeah, like, where is this carbon copy that we're supposed to be having right here? Ooh. So, it then said another quote, we did some research into the presidential papers to try to find ev- any evidence of the November 12th, 1963 letter to the director of the CIA, John McCone. So the technician had told Little Life's Mysteries, despite the fact that JFK kept carbon copies of all his letters, even the classified ones. So, quote, in searching through the president's office's files, CIA, NASA, and national security files, we could find no evidence of this memo or anything like it of him when he was requesting this stuff. Yeah. So furthermore, it doesn't look like any other top secret memos Kennedy wrote during his presidency. So something is a little odd about it, the technician had said. Mm -hmm. It is sanitized in very odd places. The director's name, the top heading of the document, which usually distinguishes which agency is generating it. Oh. And then the tiny top secret print at the top of a letter. So top top secret items are usually stamped in large dark ink in the letter, he had also said. So they say top secret. So so it's almost like uh, there's rules in place in the government that are like... Oh, this is how like we protect things, and it's almost like mm-hmm. they knew they couldn't get away with something, so they were yeah. taking steps to hide it. Mm-hmm. So like cutting off the letterheads and like things like that. That's wild. I know, and like they should all have these certain things, and they're all missing it. So you then... don't have to follow protocol if it's not there. If it's, yeah, not, if it's real. not real, if it's quote. not real, mm-hmm. that's wild. So then the missing link. Lester claims that the new declassified memo is thus the missing link in a conspiracy theory surrounding another document that many conspiracy theorists think indicate that the cia killed kennedy to prevent his involvement in the ufo cover-up so they're thinking this is all just all connected why um however the second document and thus the conclusion is also suspect the document called the burned memo was passed to the fringe media in 1999 by the anonymous source claiming to be a former cia operative the alleged leaker said he worked for the cia between 1960 and 1974 and pulled the memo which experts have never verified as authentic from a fire when the agency was burning some of its most sensitive files. So this guy is saying this thing was real and I snatched it. He pulled the memo. Wait, they were burning sensitive files so they wouldn't be on record anymore and he snatched it. He snatched it. And the thing is like they all had this copy and they were like, well, no one can verify this is real. But he's saying that like, he was the one that pulled the memo when all these census files were being burned in like, here. Like, they were like, uh, like, we we don't know if it's real or not. Let's burn know. it. But, but then like, he's no, like, no, I literally no. worked there at this mm, time. And, like, mm, I pulled the memo. That's crazy. That's wild. But in the burned memo, the CIA director at the time, his name was blacked out, allegedly wrote Lancer, which is the CIA's code name for JFK, um, has what? made... Some, really? They called him Lancer. Why? I don't know. I don't know why they called him that, but they called him that. We'd be doing some weird stuff. They just making code names and stuff. 
but he had made some inquiries regarding our activities, which we cannot allow. So please submit your reviews no later than October. Your action is this matter is critical to the continuance of this group, is what this had said. So whatever that means. It's like insanely cryptic. Leave it yeah. to the CIA to make a cryptic letter. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say it again. Let's, this is what the CIA's yeah. nickname said for him. Okay. Lancer has made some inquiries regarding our activities, which we cannot allow. Please submit your reviews no later than October. Your action to this matter is critical to the continuance of the group. <sighs> hmm. Wow, that's the part of the memo. So a little cryptic, a little but cryptic, it's giving... Like, what are you meaning? It's giving either review could mean, like, we need a way to stop JFK. Yeah. I need you guys to like, find a way to stop him. What is mm-hmm. your game plan? Like, what are we going to do to stop this from happening? Yeah. Or, like, how are you going to get him this documentation? I think yeah. it could be swinged either way, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm seeing mm. it as a cover-up. But the new- I mean, just being so urgent about reviews by February. Mm. You're like, let's get this figured out, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Because it's going to die. Mm-hmm. So the new memo, Lester said, proves JFK really was probing the CIA about UFO intelligence <laughs> and that the CIA might have taken steps to prevent this. If Kennedy had gotten some level of control of this issue from NASA or the CIA, who's to say he wouldn't have disclosed that information to the American public? Who knows where that would have led, Lester commented. Given that most historians believe the burned memo is a fake, however, the connection to the CIA's secret plot to assassinate JFK doesn't stick. Alternatively, even if the burned memo is fake, but the newly surfaced memo is real, there are several perfectly logical reasons why Kennedy might have written it. Lester believes that the president was interested in UFO intelligence for three main reasons. First, Lester said, Kennedy was concerned that UFOs seen by the Soviets would be misinterpreted by them being from the U.S. And they don't want them to think, oh my gosh, they're doing this stuff to us, let's do something to them. So it could cause more like uh, political yeah, and issues war. And then war. Uh, um, so they're afraid of being misinterpreted as the U.S. aircraft behaving provocatively. Mm. This may be what Kennedy implied when he allegedly wrote it. He said it is important that we make a distinction between known and unknowns in the events that the Soviets try to mistake our extended cooperation as a cover for intelligence gathering of their defense or space programs. So they don't Ooh. want to think that we were spying on them. Mm. to like gain more information so it's like a safety thing too Mm -hmm. wild and then the second reason for kennedy's inquiry could have been his obvious interest in space travel at the time of his alleged writing this man loves space travel he loves that space so nasa was a new agency um lester explained and the whole question of outer space and life in outer space was at the forefront of everybody's thinking at the time third there was a natural concern about USO at the time due to the spurt of incidents thought to have been sightings that we've talked about in different episodes at that time. In the 1960s, nearly everyone was interested in UFOs, JFK, NASA, and CIA, and citizens alike. So could all of this led to JFK's demise? Like, could this have been the reason that mm-hmm. he was assassinated? Ooh. But I feel like those are, pre- those are pretty strong reasonings. Like, yeah, they're like, I feel like that's more solid of like the inside job idea than the mm-hmm. inside job, like theory with like the driver like i feel like this one's a little bit more like tight end of like why you would want to assassinate a president Mm -hmm. that's crazy and i think that's all the theories i have would you want to tell me what this marilyn monroe theory is if you i don't know that much no i want to see if i can look it up i'm i just know that it was like a meme for like a while and there's like a whole thing i i wish i knew more unfortunately jfk it's just a meme. Was Robert Kennedy responsible? Oh, wait. They're saying that was Robert Kennedy responsible for Marilyn Monroe's death. Is it backwards? You know, it's possible that that was the original meme and my brain flipped it. <laughs> Not the Maybe. meme, but you know. <laughs> the me- she's, di- she's dead. Yeah, I don't know. What she killed over a JFK secret. I feel like that's something we're gonna have to look into because that's yeah, a lot. Maybe but, a mini one. I just know that yeah. like there's stuff with it because like uh she like sang like at his like birthday. That's where the oh, happy birthday, Mr. Mr. President. President. That's where it came from. Ew. Um and there's theories that they had like a secret, like <gasps> what about Jacqueline? Ja- Girl, Jacqueline looks like she bites people. Jacqueline, <laughs> Jacqueline did all the behind the scenes. She was making that White House stunning. She was so cute. Easter would have been lovely there. Yeah. But no, I just know that like there's stuff about it. I don't know much. Okay. But as you could see even from that Google search, there's not like... 
<laughs> yeah, there's like yeah. a lot, but it's also like from a weird website, and it's Fair. like, what's going on here? Are, do you know of any other theories you wanted to share, or are these all kind of the main, like the Umbrella Man? Yeah, I feel like I tried to share just the most popular, like crazy ones I could find, but yeah, I know that like people think of the Umbrella Man also could have been like a time traveler theory because I oh. do know that uh, mm-hmm. we've talked about before in the podcast, but the idea of that weird guy that was wearing like. Y2K clothes. Oh, with and that, that cell like, phone? No, yeah, like picture. that like weird one. And I know that they said that there's like explanations for it, but like mm-hmm. apparently that happened around like a similar like time frame. Okay. So I feel like there's a lot of fantasy and mystery that goes on with the JFK uh, assassination. I think the Umbrella Man theory is strong in the sense that it was signaling. Mm-hmm. And I do think the CIA thing is very interesting, too. Mm-hmm. I could just see there's a lot of different reasons why people would want to take down JFK because of what he stood for. Yeah. And the type of American dream he was initiating. Yeah. So. Like, there's so many reasons he could have been a target. And, like, do you think there was more than one killer then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I think so, too, but, like, you never back, know. Back to, like, what I said, like, earlier. I just, mm-hmm. like, one singular person is not assassinating a president. You need, like... You need, like, a crew. You need a crew. Mm-hmm. Like, a like a not a big crew, because then everyone will be like, hey, wh- what are y'all doing here? But, yeah. like, it's not... You can't strategically plan just, like, one person to, yeah. like, do it. Um, like, I know Lincoln, technically, but that's, like, a different situation. Yeah. That's, like... That's a very, like confined space Mm -hmm. and then before this was on a street with all these people Mm -hmm. like yeah like this is like what didn't you say two hundred thousand people gathered there i think that was the right number i think that was what it said something like that so Mm -hmm. it's just like if you're gonna make a big spectacle out of it you need to have a plan yeah and they're planning it out and like also lincoln was a long like a long time prior yeah so like they probably didn't even consider much back when lincoln was president of like yeah. Someone's going to try to kill the president. Like, there probably wasn't a huge thought in their brain. I mean, it's kind of crazy, too, because, like, I feel like this assassination probably made safety protocols in the government and for the president. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess I'm boring you, Luna, Luna's whatever. Over it. Um, Bye, I bet it's just, like, made the safety all more. Uh... Are you done yet, Luna? <laughs> <laughs> she keeps adjusting herself. Um, yeah, no, that's all. Like, yeah. just I feel like the safety of, like, the presidents is, like, because you don't see them doing, like, appearances like that anymore. Yeah. And, like, it is so, like, It's on. tight-knit. It is it's tight. tight. And if the president makes an appearance, it is. He's, like, behind bulletproof glass or, like, Yeah, just, like, like wild. I don't know. I feel like part of my brain wants to try to connect the Umbrella Man to, like... I Time to get a creative writing. I know. Like, I kind of <laughs> want to connect it to the alien thing. But mm-hmm. also, think now I'm like, what about the Mafia one? The Mafia one seems pretty... I forgot oh. about the Mafia one, LOL. I'm like, how do I choose? Oh. I'm, I think I'm going to go with my gut and say the alien one, just because I want to bring a little bit of aliens up in here. But Umbrella like, Man could have been an alien. Yeah, what, well, what if that? <laughs> that's a crazy one. Or what if, like, the Umbrella Man was hired by people in the CIA to mm. be the signaler for the people there to then go and assassinate JFK, have more than... One person do it that way. That'd be crazy. But he's just part of their plan to cover up these, like, secret documents and, like... I do like that one. Group. I think it is crazy. Like, yeah. It, I didn't know about the letterhead thing. Yeah. Like, the cutting off the letterhead so, like, no one know- Like, that's wild to mm-hmm. me. That like, it just, just seems so... like a movie because it's so ridiculous. But also, like... Yeah. But it seems plausible at the same time. Like, yeah. I just... I like that type of theory because i feel like it's not like so outlandish it's like crazy you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i like the crazy ones too but it just seems like wait that makes sense what of course you would want to like yeah work within the system to beat it in the Mm -hmm. sense of like uh villainy i guess would be the right word now i guess do you believe in the alien one more or the mafia hit more between those two because if you were to connect those to the umbrella man yeah, which, which one, one would I link in there? Mm. Mm. I could see... I think I would go with the Mafia one, mm-hmm. simply because I I don't like the idea that they did this, but I yeah. the idea that like there might have been more money involved, it was revenge on the brother. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're going after him. Yeah, like- and like... Um, it's similar to like with... Uh, JFK was like such a big... Uh, icon in the sense of like americana and like how we view things the same way marilyn monroe was so Mm -hmm. it's just like 
I could see a lot of reasons why the mafia would love to have a hit like that in their yeah. books and think of like the income that might come from well, taking also, down that. Well, also like the fear they like they'd have so much power then within like they were the pro- community because they had taken down like, yeah. the big man quite literally. So I'm if tin- they can take him down yeah. fear us. I'm like, tinfoil hatting right now, but like yeah. if like imagine like you know when he was like assassinated that made maybe like the Soviet versus us stuff even more like tense so like yeah. the mafia could have had like you said like mm-hmm. more opportunity maybe they were hoping it would literally be like um war like yeah. full on like armageddon everywhere mm-hmm. yeah so i think it makes sense and like i also believe there was obviously more than one shooter and like right there's still people to this day who believe that oswald was the only person who did it why and i'm like okay but like look at some of the facts like there's even people like in the government who still think in the government, like, that still believe there's only one. And I'm, like, even after, like, stuff that has been unraveled and, like, yeah. looking at the bullets and, like, these are from this company, these are mm-hmm. distinguishable, these are indistinguishable, like, all of these yeah. facts and you're still... They were different guns, like... Yeah, like, you're still just choosing to believe. I don't know. And it I happens so fast, head. I just don't see him switching guns and having that accuracy that quick. Yeah. Like, I just, mm, I don't know. But also, I haven't even seen much of what actually, like, motivated Oswald to do it. Because yeah. obviously he was trying to do it. If he did or if he didn't, is yeah. still up for well, debate. But like, we'll never know. We'll never know. Because somebody... Somebody took his life. Someone made him, uh, what's it called? Uh, kick the can? Kick, kick the bucket? Kick, kick the, the can. Kick the can, kick Isn't the bucket. Isn't that game from like the 30s? Trash the bucket. Kick the bucket. Kick the bucket over. That's right. Kick the bucket. Oh yeah, I just, I'm about to kick the bucket. There it is. Yeah, there you go. You. Look at you being stunning. Kick the can. Kick the can. So do you have any more thoughts? Is that what you believe you're believing? Yes. Mafia, mafia umbrella man? I, before we wrap up, I, yeah, I gotta yeah. go, who wants to go swimming in my pool? In my pool, I mean bathtub. I and mean by bathtub, tub. I mean cover ups. You're welcome. Thank you for saying that instead. I, <laughs> I couldn't do you. the JFK episode without a JFK impression because I've done it on other episodes. Yeah. That would inspired you. Be no, real. No, but sure. I think it did. <laughs> I didn't know that was a JFK thing. So thank you for enlightening me for that. You're welcome. So, in conclusion, the tragic assassination of President JFK has created one of the best known real life whodunits in American history. But I guess the truth of what really happened to JFK on November 21st of 1963 will forever remain a mystery. mystery. Yeah. That was beautiful. Wow, we should be singers or something. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Please uh, subscribe, follow, rate, comment, wherever you are. Leave yes. us a review. It helps us so much. It really does. Follow us on the socials at... The Mystery Files underscore on the Instagram. Gram, gram, gram. And where can they find us on TikTok? At the Mystery Files podcast, podcast, podcast. Please give us a follow. We would love to hear from you guys. Let us know if there's any other episodes you would like for us to do. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if you have any other theories you'd like to share with us that we didn't talk about, yeah. I'd love to hear the theories. Be great. Like, I want to do a deep dive, so please reach out. I, I kind of would love to do like a sequel episode to this, yeah. maybe of like a follow up of once we find out more, maybe about like Oswald, or we yeah. can come back with more about Marilyn Monroe, or mm-hmm. just like like there are so many things we can yeah. dig deeper in. So this could be a lot of little entrance. Yeah, little mini mist. Mini yeah. mysteries inside of a big episode, yes. kind of following up this one. That would be amazing. Yeah. But yes, stay on board with us, guys. We have some really fun things, unique ideas coming soon. So we're switching it up around here, and we hope you stick with us yeah, for it. We hope so. We love you the most. So yes. Good so we will see bye. you next time. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye.